Hello, and welcome to the orchestration and automation section of the Corelight Cyber Lab. We'll be working in Splunk Phantom today, but note that the concepts we'll be applying work equally well in any modern SOAR framework. The first step in any successful SOAR deployment is deciding what you want to automate. Obviously, you'll want to go after tasks that your team does frequently, usually more than once per person per day. Ideally, these tasks should be boring and or error prone when done by humans, and should have a clearly defined set of steps that can be taken based upon data that your script can understand. Your goal is not only to speed up the job being done by your analysts, but to spare them from the worst sort of IT work, stuff where you have to pay attention to not make a mistake, but are bored by the repetition and the time spent waiting for queries to return. You'll end up with a happier, more productive team if they spend more time applying human judgment than copying and pasting between systems. For our example here, we've chosen a task every SOC has seen thousands of times, an alert for a query to a suspicious DNS name. Let's dive straight into the Phantom interface, starting with a playbook designed for this task that I wrote and published on the Corelight GitHub a few months ago. The workflow itself is pretty straightforward. The playbook is called when a surrogate alert for a suspicious domain name triggers, and after a quick timestamp format, we first query the Corelight DNS logs to determine the outcome of that query. If it came back as an NX domain or there was no response at all because of a firewall block or a DNS server failure, we drop out of execution flow since obviously nothing further happened in that sequence of events. If, however, one or more responses were received, we grab them and loop through the list using each IP address as a query back into the con log that tells us whether the client actually connected to the server in question and whether any bytes were transferred on said connection. If a full connection did occur, we grab one set of indicators for HTTP, URI, host name, user agent, etc., and a whole different set, including the certificate subject, validation status, and JA3 if it was SSL. If any files were transferred in plain text, we grab their hashes from the files log and do a file reputation lookup on them. And last but not least, we check whether there were any other Suricata alerts on these resultant connections, which allows us to not only increase confidence in the original alert, but also to kill multiple birds with one stone by dealing with all of the alerts as a group. Now, the combination of Corelight data and the Phantom framework made the actual implementation easy too. As you can see here, we're able to build queries with variables like the UID from the Suricata alert triggering the playbook, which lets us get the associated DNS logs in just a single pivot, and then using a pre-configured command to be able to send that query into the sim. Branching based on the return results is just as simple, with plenty of power within the UI for complex conditions, as well as the full power and complexity of Python available under the hood if you need to go deeper. Now, if you wanted to extend this and take an automated action to say kick a system that had downloaded known malware off the network, you just drag, drop, and choose action here, and then choose from what's been configured in your environment so that you could say, use your NAC to drop the host into a quarantine VLAN or tell your firewall to block the IP altogether. With this playbook put into action, analysts can now review these types of events in a matter of seconds. All the data that they need to do their jobs is available in a matter of just a few clicks within a single UI with no copy and paste, no waiting for queries to return, <clears throat> and a guaranteed uniform process across the team. Any improvements to the process can be made centrally and immediately, and junior team members can be further trained by having them read and follow along with the process directly. 